Hi, it's Emily. Um, today for our live stream, just practicing, we're going to work on Swan Song, the serenade by um, Franz Schubert. Uh, it is an arrangement and you can find it on Tomplay. It's, um, this video is sponsored by Tomplay. It's an app that you can use to um, play with accompaniment. So when you purchase a, a piece, you get the music, you get um, flute recording, an accompaniment recording, which is either piano or orchestra, and then you get uh, also both combined. But today we're going to work only with the accompaniment. So yeah, if you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the live chat and I will answer them during the live stream. the first section um, yeah I think that's the type of piece uh, that could benefit from uh, singing and playing in your flute uh, singing in your flute and playing at the same time like this opens the sound it helps I'll do it with the F It begins with a mezzo. Oh, I'll, st I'll put it in the beginning so you can see the music. Am I talking loud enough? Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, mezzo piano, but I wouldn't stress too much about it because you're coming in. You don't want to sound shy. So, I would think of a color that's more transparent. And maybe a relaxed vibrato because if you. If you want a color that's a bit more transparent, relaxed, you know, you don't want to have a vibrato like this at the same time. Because it gives some, I don't know, it feels stressed to me. So more of a relaxed vibrato here. crescendo don't start loud right away or you won't get the effect of a crescendo so don't start a bit start with the mezzo piano same thing and you have a decrescendo on those notes at the end of the phrase 
Um, naturally, you would do it probably even if it wasn't written. And uh, be careful with the intonation that it doesn't go down. So you'll want to um, send the air a bit higher at the end of the note um, so that the intonation doesn't go down like this. You don't want that. Okay. And now we start with the forte, so it's a bit more intense, so everything will be a bit more intense. The vibrato will be a bit more present, and I'll give it a more, um, a darker color. I don't want to breathe between, you know, when I want to, hmm, I, I don't know. I'll check. Okay. Maybe I'll breathe before I do the subito piano. Maybe I won't. Oh, is that the right spot? Yeah, it is. You put it there. Thanks. Okay. big uh, decrescendo there on 22 because it, it's gonna sound like all tiny uh, phrases that are chopped all the time and I think it becomes less interesting when you play just tiny chopped phrases naturally of course I'm not, there's gonna be a tiny decrescendo but but by having it written there I think it um, makes it too much um, yeah I I won't get cut too much in the in those dynamics either because I don't I'm gonna change the color but I still want to have the um, the feel of, of a long phrase so I'm gonna do that again better for the phrasing there um, so yeah don't forget it's a the long phrase thing because sometimes when we we think um, about all the tiny details we forget that that more most more important part that is the, the phrase the long phrase I try to breathe every you can breathe almost every two bars there because they're two bar motives um, or when you have a dotted note, just after that dotted note is a good place to breathe sometimes. Or when you have a long note, like a, yeah, a dotted uh, half note. Like at uh, 20, wait, at 20, because you can cut that A a little bit. And then at 22, you can do it again. And then maybe... to breathe because you have a crescendo and you want it to be together so maybe I would do no yeah but I'll breathe at 24 after the F sharp oh continue okay Yeah, and 
on that hey i won't start loud because if i start loud i lose more air you know <laughs> uh 29 this thing you can practice um Just think, subdivide it in six if you have a difficulty with that. Ta ta, one two three four five six one or one two three one two three one. playing the accompaniment it says crescendo but i think i would try to be a bit more um discreet because i think the flute is accompanying the, the piano you know it's a how do you say contrechamp you know when you have counter another voice. yeah like kind of counter a, voice. yeah i think it's a counter voice there Okay, I'll just finish that part. Okay, I'm just going to look through it quickly because there's little parts I didn't expect. and I'll see what's coming up and at the end I'll replay the whole thing okay so I start from 33 no question no I was just listening I don't like it okay people want you to play Daphne and Chloe next time oh that's cool <laughs> Is um it's a nice arrangement I think. Uh, is a is an um, orchestral part loud enough? Yeah, people hear it well. Because sometimes I would like it just a tiny bit louder in some spots just to make sure I'm still with it. But yeah, I like the parts that are um um yeah like let's see what's the bar like fifty four around there like here. And that area really feels like a 
like a ballet. Well, it is. Is it a ballet? No, people have danced on it. And you really see the... I, get, I see a couple, you know, and mm, I imagine that. It's very nice in my head. <laughs> so I'll just do it again from there. Someone's uh, saying they, they practice uh, they practice with this one on tom play and they run out of breath and end up slightly out of tune with the accompaniment. Okay, well... Maria Davis. Yeah, you need to take good breaths. And sometimes, you know, the long notes... The, the dotted half notes, you can you can shorten them. So just do two beats and take a whole beat to breathe. Because the most important part of rhythm is where you start the note more than where you stop it. Of course, if you can stop it at the right place, it's good. But the most important is where you, where you start that note. And sometimes when we want to breathe too fast, we, uh, we get inefficient breaths and they're not even faster because we, we close the throat. So when we're in a state of mind of of breathing fast we're like <gasps> you know nothing comes in if you think about breathing slowly it doesn't take more time but then it really fills up the lungs and when i play i try to feel um okay i feel weird saying that but i'll say it anyways i try to feel like i'm um master of the time what i mean by that is i used to always be out of breath and I used to always feel that I had to breathe fast. And at one point, I started experiencing a feeling of taking more time to breathe. But then I was not late anymore. And yeah, I felt like time was that thing. Because we experience time. And I guess when we feel that we're not rushed, the same amount of time doesn't feel the same to us. Does anyone uh, understand what I mean? Yeah? You have to experience it. So maybe try to take more time and see how it feels and then tell us if you understand what I mean then. Because it's really an exper ex experimental thing. You have to try it and feel it because it's not a intellectual thing as much as a uh, something you, you can really feel. Someone wants to know, Kristen Upperman wants to know, uh, what are some simple exercises you can use to open your throat? Uh, you can do as if you're yawning, <gasps> you know, just yawning, your throat will be open. That's the easiest one. Um, what else? Yeah. If you, The thing is, yeah, don't try to be too fast because that's what, <gasps> you know, if you hear that. And uh, another thing that can help if you want to breathe fast and not feel rushed as much is push your belly forward. So you're like... <sighs> And then you go, you push it, and air will come in right away. So that's a good way too. So I go, I make space, and then air comes in. Mm -hmm. Maria says, I totally understand. I always take very short, very quick short breaths. Yeah, yeah. try to fill up, you know, yeah. push your belly forward like that, or open your chest, open the whole, you know, all around, and, you know, if you... Use even your back and your, you yeah. push and then you go, uh -huh. you know, your shoulder blades, they go away from each other. Uh -huh. So you, because your, your lungs are there as well, they're in the back. So you bl br blow out, you breathe out mm -hmm. and then you open. Yeah. But sometimes by making the space, the air will come in, you know, is it the, the chicken or the, or the uh -huh. egg first, uh -huh. you know, it's uh, it's not that <laughs> it's both <laughs> uh -huh. there. You have to do both. Uh, yeah, so maybe try that. Um, and also for the tuning part, maybe just take a tuner and see where you where you get out of tune. If you're out of tune and you're low just because you don't ha have enough breath, then it's going to be taken care of just by breathing. Okay, but yeah, a lot of places you can breathe. When you have a dotted note, even a quarter, eight, a quarter dotted quarters, yeah. Sometimes you can breathe there just after that. And then a long, long notes, you can shorten them a little bit. Um, here, like, let's say I take it at uh, 48.
I breathe sometimes. Even one breath was a bit more, um, you could hear it, but it wasn't, I felt it wasn't close that much, but sometimes you hear them. You don't have to become too stressed about it either, you know. Um, I'm going to work on that little part at 63. scale starting on the A and then when you get on the G it's chromatic and then you skip from D to F sharp so you group in three groups instead of thinking of 15 notes asking about the, about um, the out of tune thing it can also be that there's a lot of dynamics here so maybe when you play forte versus uh, piano your dynamics um, may have an impact on your on your tuning so you can also practice with a tuner just um, uh, long notes once loud uh, once soft and try to keep it in the middle so see you can work on that and then also use it when you practice the piece it's a good thing to do yeah I'm gonna look at that's the end so when you have those um, arpeggios so you see at 77 it's a G minor arpeggio Then D major, A major, yeah, so um, that's why we practice arpeggios and scales. Because even if you don't necessarily recognize it uh, consciously that it's a G minor arpeggio, you practiced it, your fingers know it, it's going to be easier to play uh, when you see it in a piece, I think. But it's even better if you see it. But Okay, any more questions? Uh, questions about other stuff. but. Uh, okay, so maybe I play it once, the whole thing, I do my best. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we answer the other questions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and if you want to practice with a tuner, um, you don't need, because my tuner is old. I bought it a while ago. I, I love it, but uh, you can mm -hmm. just, yeah. It's a guitar tuner, but I bought it because it, it's... Um, what's the model, what's, what's the model it's number? It's a Boss. TU-15? TU-15, yeah. Yeah, TU-15. And you can put a note, so let's say um, you want to practice, uh, so you can have a note. Not Let's a sponsored say post. I want to have. <laughs> Let's say in the beginning, I want to have a um, D. Because I'm in A minor in the I'm in D minor in the beginning.
can improvise in that scale a little bit with that drone and just listen, you know, and um, almost like a music meditation. <laughs> so, yeah. But I think you can have that on, on apps now. Hmm? Yeah. It's cheaper or free. But I don't know. I have that, so I didn't put it on my phone because I don't need it. I have it there. Okay. So I play it from the top. nice I like the arrangement it's cool just I hit my flute on the stand put it too close that's okay it's just a little breaks my heart is there any question yeah, yeah, yeah. Question yes there are, there are plenty of questions if you have any last uh, minute questions for the podcast uh, put them in the comments section uh, right now we'll get to them but first um, uh, Mandy wants to know do you have exercises before and after playing the flute uh, i.e. your hands and arms, etc. Okay, for pain? No, just after when you... Uh, do you have exercises before and after playing? For arms and hands. So I or guess more. for... Uh, 
to to uh, avoid no, pain, I guess. I don't know about that, but uh, I think just uh, maybe. Because some 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 musicians uh, stretch before they start playing, and um, so maybe that's what she's talking about. I don't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not that disciplined, but I do stretch in not necessarily just before I play or after I play, but I. I try to uh, exercise and stretch and uh, keep my muscles uh, in shape, you know. Um, but when I play, I try to be conscious of my posture so I don't hurt myself. And I feel for me, it was more efficient uh, to do that because I did stretch before playing for a long time. And personally, I didn't see any improvement in my, uh, my pain. I had a lot of pain back then. And um, okay. I would stretch. The stretch. The stretch. Yeah. I had a lot of pain, and I went to a <coughs> physiotherapist a long time ago who gave me stretches to do before playing. I think I overstretched and make it made it worse. Personally, I think that's what happened. And um, I had a very bad posture, and that's what needed to be addressed. Uh, so in my case, um, when it got better, when I improved my posture, um, but stretches didn't really help that much. I feel right now um, I do stretch to keep my body in, in shape in general, but I don't necessarily stretch just before and after I play. If you have pain, um, you should look at your posture, the way you hold your flute, um, the way you hold your head. Are you bringing your head towards your flute? If your arm hurt, are you bringing your arms up? Because that's something I see a lot in flutists, playing with the arms like this, like you're a little bird. It's very cute, but it doesn't, um, it's not ergonomic. So keeping everything aligned, you know, your arm here, it's not supposed to go too far, the, the, the hand. So trying to keep a good alignment here and a good alignment with your right mm -hmm. arm instead of bringing yeah, it there's, up. There's huge nerve endings in the, in the neck that connect. That actually is what is the source of people's, uh, you know, when you have ten, not tendonitis, but yeah, the, tendonitis any of those itises, yeah. all those, uh, they're actually in the upper shoulder. That's where that nerve begins. And lifting up here is yeah. really where it pinches it more. If you think more like that, yeah, if you, pinching, yeah, you pinch a nerve here. It's going to pinch the nerve, yeah. And uh, also the head, because a lot of flutists, yeah. and I did that for years, bring their head to the flute. Um, totally. Always think about bringing your chin inwards. So bring your chin in. Bring your flute to yourself. You have to twist to turn your head a little bit to the left and then bring your flute towards yourself. Yeah, the flute always comes to you, not you to the flute. But I, I totally uh, do stretch in life. Like almost every day I stretch, but not necessarily before and after I play. Mm -hmm. Just uh, in a, you know, just a, in general, I try to have a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amir, he wants to know, I'm trying, uh, now trying to make my hands to stay closer to the flute so I can play faster. Are there any tips that you have to make myself used to it? Yeah, uh, well, 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 I don't know. Maybe what I would do is practice um, uh, little exercises of five note exercises like, you know, in Tafanel uh, yeah. and Gobar, Not you have a... Almost. Uh, EG1, yeah. EJ1, EJ1, uh, you go like this, you know. Because they're always the same fingers moving, so it's going to be easier to focus on that yeah, than if you play things. big pieces. Also, uh, maybe I would just move my fingers on my flute mm -hmm. without playing and just looking at them, because... The thing is, with the flute, we don't see what we're doing with our fingers. So mm -hmm. I would practice maybe like this a little bit. So I can make a connection between what I see and what I feel. And then when you put your flute back up, you try to remember how it feels when it's closer. Um, but some people have high fingers and a very fast technique. So, right. yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah. But in general, it's logical to keep your fingers closer. If you want to play faster, it's less less uh, um, distance to cover. Mm -hmm. But that's how I would work on it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hopefully that helps. Yeah, that could be a good and starting point. And maybe start slowly, because now Always I did it fast. Slowly, yeah. I did... Yeah. But in reality... And really feel it. Because yeah. you're trying to... Uh, to teach your body a new feeling mm -hmm. and
and a new habit. So if you do it fast, you're probably going to go back in your old habit. So yeah. I that would be like... And then when you do feel it, it it's going well, you can increase the speed gradually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully yeah, hopefully that helps. And, and not necessarily, I would even say, uh, it's not necessarily to have your fingers always on the, like, as close as possible. It, it is optimal in a certain way, but then there's also new yeah, things that you get to learn as I well. I don't focus on that that yeah, much. I don't focus that much either. On that no, day. and there's, as you said, there's other things like using rotation. Yeah. I know for you it did a Rotation a saved my game. Yeah, yeah. It saved my game completely. And, no um, Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, for me, it was a... Uh, I learned it through piano uh, master classes, mm -hmm. that rotation thing. Yeah. And then I thought, wow, why wouldn't I use that when I play yeah, the flute? Less energy. Let's say uh, you play a D trill. Oh, yeah, D trill. <laughs> oh, my God. I just go like this. Oh, yeah. Instead it's, of it's moving so my finger. Oh, yeah, because when, when you do it with the finger, it's, it's all, like you can hear it. Yeah, and I remember when I learned this yeah. and you were like, I have pain with that trill. I said, just rotate. And yeah. it took, what, one second. And you're no, like, right wow. Away. That's a life changer. And it was for me. So it's not just fingers. I think sometimes we focus a lot on the fingers alone, but the fingers don't work by themselves. They work in a system. The body is a whole system. So um, the, those fingers are connected to muscles in the arm. So if you do that, you can do that for a long time without getting tired, that movement, and you can do it pretty fast. So if the arm assists the fingers, uh, you're going to have a more efficient technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think this is our last question, and then we'll uh, get to. Uh, uh, well, actually, you can talk about first. You can talk about before we answer uh, that last question. Uh, you want to talk about the studio and about yeah. the Food Center in New York, and also talk about Tom Play first. This is what, what we used uh, today. Yeah. So, well, I talked about Tom Play in the beginning of the video, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's an app, and it's uh, beautiful. The accompaniments are nice. That arrangement is beautiful. Yeah. Some people are already asking for it. They want to know where they can get it. You can get it at Tomplay.com. Yeah. So Tomplay.com, you have a big selection of music. Uh, you when you buy, when you purchase the piece, you get the music you can even print it yeah. and you have um you even have the accompaniment very yeah. often with the That's so you right. can play with an or another person yeah. and you have a, a recording of the flute part a recording of the accompaniment part Separate. and a recording of both oh, together yeah. so you can work in different ways and at different tempos and you can work at different mm -hmm. tempos um you can loop sections and stuff yeah, because you can let's use say your i would like to use the from five to uh I never did it yet, so I don't know. Loop. So you press loop. And then you pick them. And you pick here from here, let's say. There you I, go. Now it's starting. And then. There. Yeah, just start with F only. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because I didn't press the right, right. way. But know, it does but loop that way. Yeah. It loops. And then let's say you have a little technical difficulty you want to play. Yeah. Or five bars or you can loop them. Yeah. And it's, it's a, a very good tool to practice. Yeah, it's a very good tool. It's worth the money my, if you consider, you know, trying to get a pianist to do all that work and paying by the hour and all those types of things, put things together. Yeah. This is a, a really cost-effective way of practicing and before even, something. Like yeah. the person who said, uh, we talked about intonation. Right. When I was in university, I, I wanted to work on my intonation more, but sure. with, with the piano part, but... You know, it yeah. was expensive. Yeah, the only now way, you yeah. buy this and you're you're in business. You're training, you know? Yeah, you're training your ears to be to, to get used to intonation and intervals and, yeah. and playing with other sound because that's so the whole thing. You have to expose yourself to so many sounds. It's a it's a very nice product. Yes. And the accompaniments sound good. Hey, like everything is well uh, played. It's real yeah. musicians. So mm -hmm. it's yep. good. So that and then if you are interested in taking lessons uh, with me on our studio our flute studio we have an online flute studio and uh, you can email us at okay wait i always have a difficulty with that email info at the flute channel.com yeah yeah i got it and uh, we'll send you everything you can have half hour lessons hour lessons um you can uh, take a bundle of many lessons or just one well, yeah you can save money or, by doing that yeah yeah. So just uh, email us if you're interested, and it works pretty well. Yeah, people are And you don't it. need that much. A okay, webcam. And a very good, good, lights. good internet connection. Yeah. Make sure your computer is connected right to the router, not the internet router, but your home router that you buy that has your Wi-Fi on it. Yeah. 
connected directly to that because you, you'll need the This way you don't get delay. glitches. Yeah, no glitches and no delays. Yeah. That's the key And ingredient. also a good light so I can yeah. see you. Big window. And maybe play right in front of a window if you have a laptop. Which, yeah. You know. Or so a desk you, lamp or desk whatever. Lamp, you know. Yeah. Um, and then it works very well. Yeah, so everyone's really loving it. make a lot of progress. It, yeah. And yeah, we're, we're, we're getting uh, yeah. quite a bit of people And now. we're able to work around the little differences yes. you know like i can't play right with you but sometimes i'll report on something send it to you or there's different ways to uh work um so that's great yeah um so that and then if you're looking for a flute or a piccolo uh you can go on flutesforsale.com the number four and um that is the, the for the Flute Center of New York. And the Flute Center of New York has the biggest selection of flutes and piccolos in the world, I think. Yeah, new and used. Yeah, they have... They have yeah, a gigantic new used collection. Used, yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can use our code TFC. And that code gives you perks. Like, you get a longer warranty. 18 months instead of 12. You can try more flutes, I think, up to four flutes. Mm -hmm. Um, shipping is free. You get to try out for 10 days. You can try for 10 days instead of, what is seven, it? I think. Seven days. So you get longer. And it also helps us. So uh, a lot of people have used our code already. And we thank you for that. And if you're looking for a flute, uh, alto flute, piccolo, whatever, um, try to use our code. Yeah. So. And this wor this uh, this deal works worldwide. Uh, so you can use that anywhere. You can also call them too. They are all flutists there. And they're there to uh, help you get a flute. Or yeah. a piccolo, or whatever. I had a friend at orchestra who was always purchasing flutes from them. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah she loved. She went flute crazy. Oh yeah, a new head joint, a new this, and sure. look at what I got. And uh, right. she would get very good deals in used uh, in the used section there. Oh my gosh! And uh, yeah. yeah, she would always uh, make switches on her gear. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, yeah, here's our last question. Uh, Kirsten Upperman. She's uh, she says uh, I struggle with keeping the same dynamic. And level of support with the low register compared to other registers. How do you do this? Okay, same dynamic and support. She struggles to keep the same dynamic and level of support with the low register. She can okay. she can do it with the other registers, but she can't do it. Okay, it's not register. clear to me because I don't see you or hear you. Usually, in the low register, we have difficulties keeping it loud, um, and the support might be a bit different. Let's say you sing a low note, you're going to go, oh, and then you go, I, oh, and if you put your hand on your belly, the support seems to get higher. Oh, there's like the muscles here. Oh, you feel it. So maybe try this. Let's say you do a, a second octave G. So do it. Oh, oh, sing it first and then. You still have the same pressure with the, with the, um, the rib cage, you know, but the support is a bit lower, I feel. The thing with the low register, you have to open everything and let it resonate. Sometimes we try to be too um, frontal with it. We go boom, boom. I want you to get out, and um, then it cracks more than anything else. But also test it. Try to play as loud as you can and really push it. If it cracks, it doesn't matter. You're practicing. That's the whole point of it. It's not a failure to crack a note, especially if you're practicing and testing the limits of your sound. Um, so I would try that. Also, maybe check if everything is... Um, is uh, If there's no leak in your flute... Because sometimes it can affect the low register more, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you would have more to say about leaks, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's what I would do. Just keep the air pressure, but lower a little bit. Like if you're singing. Ah, and maybe sing in your flute too. even be a support question maybe you're blocking maybe you're not opening the throat uh, it can be many different things 
We have yeah. a video about low register. You should check it out. Yeah, totally. I will squeeze in one last question. Alexander Park, you just put one up, so let's answer it. Any tips on getting low dynamics in the mid-high register? Okay, so playing soft in I the guess high register. Soft. Yeah, I guess playing soft. Yeah. Okay. Well, you need to close your lips. Keep a lot of air pressure. So for me, it's easier to play loud because you just open everything and put a lot of air. When you play soft, you have to feel even more support from your abs and you put less air and you close the hole so that the air gets in the same spot because if it if it doesn't get as far then your your um your intonation will be too low so okay. that's pretty much it but support 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 and don't don't feel closed and 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 um tensed you know it's closed it's 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 smaller but it's not uh it's not tensed you know yeah. sometimes i see people with a lot of uh, tension in their face too so if you if you some 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 expressive things in their face don't don't uh, make a problem but if it's a a stress related thing you know sometimes it's a signal that there's stress and maybe you're there's a muscle that's getting in the way of a good sound because when you get too nervous some muscles come into action that shouldn't be working at all there so mm -hmm. it's different to have a facial expression because you're expressing yourself than to have a tension in your face mm -hmm. so just be aware of that tension is not necessarily a bad thing in itself but it can be showing it can be a a sign that there's tension also elsewhere like in the throat or other places that keep you from having a good sound when you play soft mm -hmm. cool uh yeah so let people know that uh, there's no just practicing next week you will be in la yeah so nick and i will be at the patreon convention in la next week so no no just practicing we'll skip yeah. one or two weeks no just just next week one we'll week. skip it yeah we'll next week one. and then we're back on schedule until the first week of december and then we're going to take the three weeks off i think we're going to take almost a month off but i think practicing. i think we're gonna put one on a friday instead of a sunday didn't we say that maybe in november i think we might yeah, just check the schedule. Just check the schedule. We'll be putting <laughs> one. Schedule. We're just releasing one every. You'll know the next one, obviously, but you won't know the ones ahead <laughs> of that. Okay. Yeah. So. Because things change. Yeah, I hope this was helpful. It was very nice to play that. And um, if you liked it, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And uh, I think when we put it online, it's nice if you can press the little thumb up. And uh, yeah. yeah, the like, yeah. Yeah, the like, <laughs> and uh, see, see you next time. Thanks.